Hey guys, so recently a Catholic cardinal made headlines for his courageous statement in connection with the current war in the Middle East. But before we get into the details, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss any of our videos. Okay, so Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizabella, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem for the Catholic Church, had recently issued a letter calling for a day of fasting, abstinence, and prayer to bring about peace and unity in the Holy Land. While this response to the war was reflected by many other religious leaders, it was a different statement that shocked the world. In an online interview on October 16th, the Cardinal declared his concern and commitment towards those who were being held hostage by Hamas terrorists. He said he was willing to offer himself in exchange for the Israeli children. His exact words were, if I am ready for an exchange, anything, if this can lead to freedom and bring those children back home, no problem. On my part, absolute willingness. The first thing to do is to try to win the release of the hostages, otherwise there will be no way of stopping an escalation. We are willing to help, even me personally. At a time when people feel that offering words of support are enough, he has gone the extra mile to show that he is willing to offer his life for the sake of the vulnerable. But should this be shocking for Catholics? Is this the first time a Catholic was willing to sacrifice their life for others? No. Absolutely not. There have been many examples throughout history of people who showed heroic courage. One famous example is of course Saint Maximilian Kolbe. Saint Maximilian was a Polish priest who was killed by the Nazis with a lethal injection in 1941. Saint Maximilian who was 47 at the time was initially arrested for aiding Jews and was imprisoned in Warsaw before being transported to a concentration camp in Auschwitz. A few months later, a few prisoners seemed to have escaped the camp. In order to discourage anyone else thinking of attempting an escape, 10 men were picked to be starved to death. One of them cried out, my wife, my children. Moved with compassion, Saint Maximilian offered to take that man's place. He was the last member of the group to stay alive even after two weeks of starvation and dehydration. Finally, the guards gave him a lethal injection of carbolic acid. Saint Maximilian died on August 14, 1941. The other famous saint who was killed in Auschwitz was Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross or Saint Edith Stein. She was the first Jewish woman to convert to Catholicism. When she was 30 years old, she converted to Catholicism and joined the Carmelite order 12 years later. Three years after the start of World War II, the Dutch bishops had written several letters protesting the violence against the Jews by the Nazis. In response, Saint Teresa and her sister Rosa, along with several others from her religious community, were arrested and sent to concentration camps. It was here in 1942, just a year after St. Maximilian Kolbe's death, that she was killed in one of the first gas chambers in Auschwitz. Another example of a Catholic who faced death fearlessly was Blessed Miguel Pro. Miguel Pro was a Mexican Jesuit priest who is remembered for his courageous faith and martyrdom during a time of religious persecution in Mexico. After the Mexican Revolution began, Miguel Pro was forced to flee to Belgium. A few years later, in 1925, he was ordained a priest. The following year, he was sent back home to recover from a chronic stomach ailment. However, just 23 days after his arrival in Mexico City, the president banned all public worship. Since it wasn't widely known yet that he was a priest, he would secretly celebrate mass, hear confessions, distribute communion and anoint the sick. In 1927, he was arrested along with his two brothers. While his youngest brother was pardoned, he was executed along with his brother Umberto by a firing squad. He refused to be blindfolded and extended his arm arms out while crying, Vivo Cristore. His courage inspired thousands of Mexicans who defied the laws and flooded the streets as he was carried in a procession to his grave. 52 years later, Pope John Paul II was welcomed with open arms to Mexico by its president. The great sacrifice made by Father Miguel Pro brought a revolution in faith to the people and the nation. Another saint who was able to convert thousands through her faith was Saint Catherine of Alexandria. Saint Catherine was raised in a noble family in 3rd century Egypt. At the age of 14, after experiencing visions of Jesus and Mary, she decided to become a Christian. When the emperor began to persecute Christians, Saint Catherine spoke up in opposition. Instead of immediately having her killed, the emperor had 50 orators and philosophers debate her. However, Catherine spoke with such conviction and faith that many of the pagans in the court ended up converting to Christianity but were immediately executed for the faith. 
the emperor then ordered to have her imprisoned and tortured despite all that she went through catherine never abandoned her faith in fact while in prison she passionately preached christ and was able to convert hundreds of people including the emperor's wife in a last attempt to make catherine reject christianity the emperor proposed offering to make her the empress catherine refused stating that she belonged only to christ with this the emperor finally lost his patience and ordered her to be executed on a breaking wheel a slow and painful death usually reserved for the worst kind of criminals however by a miracle the moment catherine touched the wheel it broke into pieces finally the emperor had her beheaded These are just a few examples of those who are willing to give up their lives for others and for the faith. The question is why did they continue to serve the church in spite of grave threats and intimidation? What gave them the courage to sacrifice their lives? In a 2008 homily Pope Benedict XVI answered like this. He compares the martyrs with those mentioned in the book of Revelation who have overcome great tribulation and now wear white robes washed in the blood of the lamb. He goes on to explain that it is a self-sacrificing love of Christ that gives them the courage to die for others. By virtue of that blood we have been purified. Sustained by that flame the martyrs too poured out their blood and were purified in love, in the love of Christ who made them capable of sacrificing themselves for love in their turn. This is what gave them the ability to truly live out the words Christ spoke to his apostles. Greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. This is not just a message for the martyrs of the old. It applies to our lives as well. In a 2012 homily Bishop Daniel Jenke explained why the need of the hour is heroic Catholicism. He said, as Christians we must love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. But as Christians we must also stand up for what we believe and always be ready to fight for the faith. The days in which we live now require heroic Catholicism. Catholicism not casual Catholicism we can no longer be Catholics by accident but instead be Catholics by conviction in our own families in our own parishes where we live and where we work like that very first apostolic generation we must be bold witnesses to the lordship of Jesus Christ we must be a fearless army of Catholics ready to give everything we have for the lord who gave everything for our salvation so what do you think about this would you be willing to die for your faith Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, let us know by liking and subscribing to our channel. It helps us a lot. Until next time.